peace love and light beautiful souls welcome back to my channel happy holidays hope you've all been having a blessed one with much prosperity we have a lot of portals open there's a lot of energy so that means there's a lot of messages channeling in for those of you who are new to my channel welcome my name is mamina please be sure to subscribe thumb up this video comment tap the little bell for all to be notified when i post new content and of course share this video with someone you think may resonate with the message for my regulars you know how this goes i get channel messages i use the cards to help show you what it is that i'm channeling and this message centers in on self-love we're also on thursday night so we're pulling in that jupiter energy we're pulling in on the energy of luck wealth prosperity all good fortune all good things and the wheel of fortune card decided to grace us with this presence that's a good sign before i hop into this reading if you're curious about these two decks here the sailor moon playing cards and the bob ross playing cards you can find them on amazon i will have the link in the description i'm an amazon affiliate so that means that when you purchase from that link i do get a commission but at no extra charge to you i'll also have this beautiful artist's um, link in the description as well this is the moon crystal tarot and it's perfect for what came out here, especially with focusing on all these different star and planet energies that we're about to tap into with this reading. Without further ado, we're going to get into it. I'm going to have some exciting news at the end of this video. So make sure that you watch this reading straight through. I mean, you kind of have to anyway, because this isn't a pick a card. <laughs> but just make sure you don't click right off the moment the reading's done, okay? We're going to hop into it. We have Six of Swords. This Six of Swords... It's coming in here because this group is split, this group that I'm channeling. On one hand, I have some people here in this group. You're sort of in this space where it's like, I don't want to complain, but I'm not necessarily happy where I am. At the same time, I, I can't really complain because I do have some things that are cool. It's kind of like being in that state of everything's not good, but everything's not bad. And what Spirit is saying here is there's an opportunity to embark on a new journey, but it has to start within the mind first. You have to be open-minded for what's about to come, and you have to prepare yourself mentally for the journey that's coming. Now, the journey may come in while you're in the midst of getting ready, but it's about understanding that you've already seen signs that it's time to move on from a certain situation. You've done all you could do or you, you've lived in a certain setting for as long as you needed to live there. And now it's time for you to, to embark on a new journey. It's time for you to move forward into another space. This means physically for many of you, mentally, spiritually, for some of you it's all the above. Now the other group I'm picking up on here, you've been feeling used and abused. You've been, you've been feeling left out in the cold. You've been feeling like people kind of take advantage of you. We're gonna actually break down why that may be in a second, but Again, you've done all you can do. Right now, you need to start focusing on self-growth, self-love, and expansion. Now, if you're with a partner and it's a divine union or a sacred union, that's fine and all, but you still need to start focusing on what are the things that you need within yourself? Because when you love yourself and you start to feed yourself the right kind of energy, you're able to receive from others that same type of love and you're able to give more but you really can't give a whole lot of yourself if you're not loving yourself if you're not filling yourself up filling your container then you're just running on empty eventually what's going to happen just like with anything else that runs on empty you'll eventually stop running now where's this coming from well we have five of diamonds here and it's interesting this is jupiter night and this is sailor jupiter for those of you who don't know the sailor moon series this is Sailor Jupiter. And this is five of diamonds, so that's five of pentacles energy. I want for you to understand Jupiter's character because you probably resonate with this. Jupiter is like the mother bear of the group. She's the person who watches out for the girl. She's very protective. Um, she She's very family oriented, even though she's always sort of alone herself. At least prior to meeting her girl, she was normally used to being alone. Jupiter also has this issue because for some of you, there a little bit of the funk that you're in might be love related. This isn't a love reading. However, what channels in is what channels in. Jupiter's love life is the kind of life where due to what other people thought of her, like, oh, you know, she's beautiful, but she's tall. She's intimidating, blah, blah, blah. 
when it came time to liking a guy, she would end up liking guys that were two-faced or guys who would put on a lot of facades. So they may act like they like her for a minute and then easily leave her for someone else. Or, you know, later on they'll leave her because of things like, oh, you're so intimidating or you're too this, you're too that. Not because she actually did anything wrong, but just because she's being herself and she adopted a certain ideal of herself that now she pulls in that energy. She had to start taking responsibility for that. You see how you see yourself will contribute to how other people treat you and see you, even if your intention for yourself is different. So that means if you're used to people calling you a certain thing and then to some degree you believe it, guess what you're manifesting? You're manifesting things that will validate what other people are saying about you, that'll validate that feeling that you're adopting. And she kind of had to figure that out, that she shouldn't keep settling for the same type of guy. Now, prior to meeting her friends, because of this, though, she was used to always being alone, always left out in the cold, always feeling somewhat abandoned. And like, you know, it never stopped her from being protective. So you could be someone that's like the mama bear or big sister like figure to your friends or your family. You're always sort of the person that people come to that or you volunteer yourself because you feel obligated. You kind of feel like it, it's not that you don't love and that you don't sometimes do it because you want to, but see, you got to be careful. You'll end up volunteering yourself so much, or you already have, that by the time people really do need you to do something, especially if they're not appreciative of it, you end up going through guilt trips and then you end up going through resentment and it just brings in all this nasty energy that you don't want. Five of Pentacles is about understanding that while you may feel and while even to some degree physically be out in the cold or cast out, there's a light, there's a better day, there's a better opportunity, there's a place waiting to seek and give you shelter. You just need to actually go in and accept the, the shelter that it's willing to give you. That's what this five of pentacles energy is. If you notice, it's like she's having a moment of, wait a minute, I'm actually, there is some light on, like there is some hope in my situation. Now... If you resonate with that being the caretaker, especially if you're the kind of volunteer when no one asked you to, first of all, stop volunteering yourself with an expectation. That's number one. Now, you might be quick to say right now, in fact, some of you already started moving your lips to say, oh, I don't expect anything. I just want, if you have to say that, that means that you do expect something. You at least expect for them to care that you did it like say a thank you or something if you constantly do things so called from your heart but you're expecting others to always give you back that same energy first of all they are not you second of all that person you're helping their way of paying respect to what you do can be totally different than what you're putting the expectation on that leads to confrontation because that leads to resentment and then that leads to you feeling like well i'm always the person that does da 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 chill on that do for yourself facilitate yourself give yourself some love some attention when you do do things for other people don't do it with the expectation of getting something back understand that when you do something truly from pure heart space and when you do it with the proper boundaries meaning you you're protecting your energy and your well-being you will naturally draw in people who will receive what you do and because they receive it they already feel gratitude so they'll give it back come out of give and take relationships and step into give and receive relationships they are two different things my loves i'm also feeling like that's confirmed with this six of swords because as my eyes keep going back to it i see boxes opening and people are putting things in boxes so this can represent boxing up things to pack up to move. This can represent making a box and just starting to get rid of what you don't need anymore. Things in your life that represent something from the past that no longer serves you and it keeps you stuck. The Six of Swords is about mentally and physically preparing yourself to move forward on a journey. Moving out of a home, maybe you live with people that you shouldn't live with anymore. And even if you just gotta start the planning process, it's time to get the ball rolling and to stop making excuses for stop making excuses to stay stuck. To go along with that, we have eight of pentacles with eight of diamonds here. And we have we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. There are no coincidences, my loves. Coincidences, um, some people would say coincidences are God's way of being anonymous. And, but honestly, there are no coincidences. Everything we do is connected. Everything we do is triggered by ourselves or another. We either adopt something from someone else, which creates a frequency and a vibration that we therefore begin to pull in our atmosphere. It's important 
Just as much as we can acknowledge when someone has planted the seed of doubt or anger within us, it's important to acknowledge that at some point we adopt it and held on to it. It becomes trauma. It becomes triggers. Triggers are things that are meant to show you what you need to work on what you need to work on. And when you start to work on those things, you open your field to receive better. You make space and you make room for what you truly deserve and truly desire versus the toxicities that you may have been used to. So instead of focusing on your mistakes or guilt tripping yourself, acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledgement is key, but understand that those mistakes came with lessons. Not to become frigid and rigid and, and, uh, Oh, I got messed over in love, so now F love. Oh, family's never here for me. What you speak becomes your reality. So if that's a reality you want to live, keep on speaking it. It'll keep on being the reality you live. Even if you call yourself locking yourself up in a room somewhere, that's still going to be your reality as long as you believe it and see it. It's a little bit of harsh love for you. In order for you to actually get what you truly deserve, you must step into it mentally, physically, spiritually. So take your mistakes as lessons, accidents that became lessons, that you now can learn from. Some people are more comfortable with the word accidents, but keep in mind, again, there are really no coincidences. Everything around us is triggering because of what is happening in our atmosphere, whether it's friends, families. At some point, it comes into our vibrational field. We either keep it or let it go. And depending on those actions, we create the scenarios that happen within our reality. We have our personal reality, and then we have how that reality affects the collective. So even if you lock yourself away, Do not think that the responsibility to the collective is gone. It's still there. There could be a place that you were supposed to be, uh, someone you were supposed to talk to, and because you weren't there, certain events took place in a different way. You are always constantly and consistently contributing to the collective. So it's best to decide for yourself how you wish for that to be than to just have this, you guys have heard me before say the difference between fate and destiny. See, destiny is your north node. It's the unknown. You take certain opportunities, you take the gamble, you take the chance, you move forward. Unknown, beautiful things happen. It may seem a little scary because it's this unknown world, but it's also fascinating and exciting. It's an adventure. Or you stay on a very fixed path, which will still have unknown events. However, those events are always tied into the same thing. They're always tied into the same result. It's kind of like if a person stays in a verbally abusive situation, your thoughts and mentality and how your self-esteem is affected is going to be the same regardless of the other things that take place that may have also been unexpected. Your reaction will be the same. So it's best to decide what you want. Do you want the faded path or do you want that, that beautiful destiny path? It's up to you. You create your reality. We have eight of wands. Eight of wands is confirming what I'm saying because this eight of wands is telling me that Whatever blessing, whatever opportunities, because I keep hearing opportunities and I keep hearing messages, whatever that is coming in, for whichever part of the collective those words resonate with, it's coming in fast. Once it fires off, there's no stopping it. It's just going to keep going. I'm going to tell you all, like I say, and for my regulars, you've heard me say it many a time back in March, get ready to be ready because not not ready is not an option. When these blessings start coming in right now, you're many of you are in this state where this may be overwhelming. Because you can't even really see how that's possible. I mean, a part of you can. You've been seeing certain signs that you've probably been ignoring, especially if it's been about a move. But at the same time, it's like, but I got this responsibility and that responsibility. Again, you're too caught up in your head about temporary things. You're not allowing yourself to truly see the entire picture. Things are coming in. Handle what you have to handle now, but be ready and be open to receive what's coming in because you're going to have to grab those opportunities and ride that wave when it comes. We have will of fortune. One cycle's ending for a new cycle to begin. Remember, we're focusing on Jupiter energy. Jupiter came out here twice in two different pictures, and we also have the will of fortune coming out. The will of fortune is, is powered by Jupiter. So Jupiter is that energy, that that prosperity, that good fortune, you get to decide how that fortune manifests for you. It's your free to free will to do so. What do you want? What are you looking for? We have eight of cups because we have eight of hearts. This eight of cups is about, again, moving on past things that no longer serve you. And you might be afraid For some of you, it's not for all of you. Some of you know you need alone time. But some of you might be afraid that you're doing a lot of this alone. For starters, you're never alone. 
But also what this is saying to me, I want you to pay attention to the, the planets represented in this card. We have Venus, Jupiter, Mercury, Mars, Moon. Venus, love, beauty, expression through love and a beauty, okay? Romance. We have Jupiter, again, that's what this whole thing is about. Prosperity, wealth, good fortune, Mercury, communication. Communication brings in healing. When you know how to communicate your feelings, when you know how to listen and communicate with another person, you heal them too. As you heal, someone else heals. Well, even if it's just a stranger you're conversating with, it also brings in the power of summoning because you start to summon things into your life. Remember, like I told you guys, it doesn't matter what the belief system in speaking words or spells. Everything you say becomes your reality. There's no such thing as an insignificant thought. So if you can communicate what you're feeling and what you desire properly, you bring into your life, you summon into your life the things that you truly need, even if you don't know off the top of the dome what they are. The energy, the universe and the divine will get together, collaborate and bring to you what you need, your spirit guides and etc. We have Mars. Mars is that courage, that strength, that power. Now, some of you might be temperamental people or this could be a friend that'll come in and give you some tough love, but it's still to wake up that courage, that power and that strength within you. And then we have the moon. The moon is mystery. The moon is about that divine feminine energy. We actually have Venus, which also is a divine feminine energy, but tapping into that intuitive nature, listening to your intuition more and not doubting it, separating your intuition from opinion. And opinions are based on the things you can see, what you felt, what someone else said it was, Intuition is connected to your core, it's connected to the absolutes of the universe. Now, over the centuries, people have changed the definition of a many words. Let that go for a second. Understand, we're talking about intuition from the standpoint of the third eye and the crown. So you're tapping into divine nature. When we say this, we're, we're talking like medium, mediumship almost, right? Your psychic ability. So with that being the case, these are people. These, these represent different sides of yourself, but they also represent people who will come in as you start to walk away from what doesn't serve you. You clearly needed to do it for clarity because we have the ace of swords. Just let go and fall like a waterfall. A waterfall falls effortlessly. Sometimes it may fall in tents. Sometimes it is just a beautiful stream, but it allows itself to free fall and it trusses. It trusts the water it's going to connect to. So understand that kind of with the mentioning of waterfall here, we're still tapping into emotions. Your emotional freedom comes when you embark on your journey, when you open your mind to embark on your physical journey. It automatically brings in your emotional freedom as well. So you see how everything is connected. And then we have the hermit card. The hermit card once again confirms this going on a journey. Some of you are already in the process of this. It's just that you, you, you kind of, your perception of it is a little off, but you're still on it. I also find it interesting. This is the, the Virgo, the Hermit is the Virgo, yet they used Pluto. And in the series, Pluto literally has like the key to different dimensions. She got all the keys. <laughs> She's the gatekeeper. Okay. So you're pulling on the energy of Pluto with this Hermit card. Wisdom. And I, here's, here's a, Here's something I want you to understand about the hermit that most people either just don't realize or notice. You see the lantern. This isn't a light bulb. This isn't a candle. This is a star. The hermit journey is a spiritual journey. It's going within, seeking solitude within self, within the stillness of the mind in order to get downloads from the divine, in order to connect to your higher self and source and receive the information and the solutions. There are no problems without solutions to receive those downloads. So what happens is the hermit reaches in the sky, takes down a star, puts the star inside of this little lantern, and it is a divine star that's lighting the hermit's way as that hermit continues on their journey. The hermit doesn't know where he or she is going. They're simply on the journey. That's once again, energy speaking to communication though, because again, Virgo. And as a Virgo, we tap into the energy of Mercury. We, we're we flow with the energy of Mercury. So you have Mercury here, here, and you have it again with the Hermit. I also, and then of course, again, with that Jupiter energy coming in here, we have fire signs, we have air signs, earth signs. I'm going to put in the description the ones that have the most pull because again, whether the signs are in your chart or not, the 
energy that they bring to the message, just like how I'm breaking down Jupiter right now and, and so on, the energy they bring to the message is what helps to unravel that message more for you. If it's in your chart, that just means there's even more of a gravitation and pull, okay? But this is about you taking that, doing that inner work, stillness of mind, taking a break, even if it's just a few days from, from people and focusing on meditation and health, because I keep hearing health as well, your container must be prepared for what your mind and your spirit is about to receive. We have the emperor. Now this reading is for feminines and masculines, divine feminines and masculines. But I want you to understand the feminine and masculine energy exists within all of us. The yin and the yang is within all of us. Some of us, and this is still sacred, some of us is we're the container. You may be the divine masculine embodied in the figure and, and such but your spirit may also resonate more with your feminine side regardless of what preferences this is energy work this is spirit work it it surpasses all the limitations and thoughts that you have when it comes to human well i should say basic human thinking okay so what i'm seeing here whether you are masculine or feminine you're being told that there's a leadership role that you're about to have to take it's very different than than the mama bear papa bear energy you're probably used to having this is saying you know the the emperor is an authority figure. They're wise and they're stern with their wisdom. Knows when to be loving, can be adulting father, but at the same time is that father that'll get you right if you're going off course. Will, will be stern and, and on you and discipline you about how you need to be. So this is telling you that you need to take the discipline that's necessary for self, getting into your practices and sticking to them so that you can actually step into your authority role correctly. Some of you are already in this role when it comes to like business. And again, with family dynamic, it's time to do it within self. A lot of this reading is about going within, taking care of all the stuff that's going on within you, recognizing who you are, because who you are is not limited to your name, ethnic, uh, friends, family, society thought is so much bigger than that. And it's time that you start tapping into that bigger expansion of self. So that you can realize there really are no limits to what you can do as long as it's coming from a heart space and as long as you can connect and be aligned. A lot of gates are opening and a lot of you are waking up to your gifts. You're waking up to certain senses. It's throwing you off because you may come from backgrounds where you just weren't taught those kind of things. Or you might have been taught, but you might have only been taught from one perspective, one angle, and you're picking up things that people who taught you that they just can't resonate with because that's not the side they were connected to. You have to seek the inner authority within yourself to realize I am going to set my own self-discipline to follow my path, learn what I need to learn, because right after that, we have the high priestess. That's the moon coming out again as well. So we have Aries and we have the high priestess and the high priestess is talking about once again, that mystery, the inner wisdom, that inner connection between you, the divine source universe, your guides, your ancestors, that inner connection. Mentors will come in, in the physical world, but they also come in as your guides. Yes, you have power within yourself and the knowledge you, you want to tap into is within self. But understand your spirit isn't contained to your container. So that means that sometimes your spirit, as well as the divine, will bring in people who can help you advance. And then you get in a position where you help people advance. And understand, no matter how high up on that totem pole you go, you're going to always end up having someone that can still help you go further. Again, we have our personal mission, our personal purpose, our personal reality, but it affects the collective. And everything that we step into in life is some form of service. Whether you wanted to acknowledge that or not, that's what it is. You want to do a business, you want to do a career, your career is going to do what? It's going to service people. And how it serves people and the type of experience they have affects what? The collective. You're never not affecting the collective. The high priestess is here to say there's a lot of hidden wisdom and a lot of hidden knowledge. A lot of unknown things that as you embark on your, on your journey, you're going to stumble across and learn. Allow yourself to learn it freely with an open mind. Use your discernment. Because remember, she also represents the strongest level of intuition. So keep using your discernment as well. Now we we flow into seven. We have two sevens here. We actually have seven of, of wands and we have seven of swords. Now seven of wands, seven of wands is saying, be mindful of, of feeling too defensive. 
yes, be protective of your energy, be protective of your physical space and whatnot. But main, and of course mental as well, because sometimes people send mental attacks. But don't get so caught up in being defensive that you build up such a wall that again, when those messengers try to come in, whether it's spiritually or physically, you can't notice them or you ignore them because you're too busy just, I'm defensive, I'm defensive, I'm defensive. Be careful with that. And with this being Mercury in the picture, communication, you don't need to argue with nobody. You can get your feeling out vocalize it they either receive it or they don't guess what if they don't receive it that's their own personal problem it has nothing to do with you you said what you said and then you keep it moving you don't have to be spiteful or none of that just keep it flow stay in flow go forward because remember mercury focuses on communication seven of swords would explain why you feel that need to be protective because you may feel that the people around you can't be trusted. That's also what that would be saying, that you feel like some of the people around you, for example, if they knew your dreams, they would go out of their way to tarnish it. Then don't tell them nothing. Why do they need to know? It's none of their business. They can learn about it when you achieve it. Okay. <laughs> Use absolutely no pressure, just like an angel's wings. You don't need to feel pressured by people who aren't contributing to your success but you also don't need to pressure them to be there if they don't want to be there. You don't need to pressure yourself to be defensive. Be protective of your space. Be pro like, for example, if somebody's in your house acting a fool and you need to kick them out, hey, do what you got to do. But there's no need for you to argue and go back and forth. That's an energy exchange. And remember what you think, what you put your feelings, energy, that emotions is energy and emotion. So where you put your feelings and emotions, it'll manifest. And notice, I want you guys to also notice we have eight here. We have eight here. I believe I saw another eight somewhere. Yeah, eight here. And we have seven, 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 ten, 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 nine. We also have at the bottom of the deck, I'm feeling compelled to point this out early. At the bottom of this deck, we have nine of wands. So that, again, some of you might be feeling overwhelmed, but you're like, I still got to keep going. For some of you, perhaps this reading kind of sparked you to keep going because that's what the nine of wands is. It's, it's like that. I'm exhausted, but I'm, I'm still standing. I, I, I'm still standing up. Know when to rest. And again, watch what you're on your guard about. Be protective of your mental space, spiritual space, physical space, but don't do it to the extent that you exhaust and deplete yourself and then you're back to running on empty, right? Apply absolutely no pressure. We have seven of pentacles with the seven of diamonds. And the more that you paint, the more that you're able to visualize. Let me translate. The more that you start to allow yourself to emotionally, spiritually, feel and paint on the canvas of creation the type of life that you want and you allow yourself to visualize it the more you manifest it into the physical the seven of pentacles it's that watching and waiting for the right time to pick your harvest you see that it's near time you you've planted the seeds or you're in the process of planting the seeds and you're observing when's the right opportunity to take hold of what it is i've been putting all of my energy into you set it. Some people call it the set it and forget it. I call it the watching and grow because when you plant a flower, you're not supposed to agonize over it, right? You plant it, you know, you got to come out, you got to water it every now and then. You got to check, make sure it's getting enough sun, maybe put a little bit of like UV sunlight on it if it needs to be, you know, and you go about your business. You go on about your regular day. You're not sitting there agonizing like, oh my God, if I don't go check my plant every second on the second, it's going to die, <laughs> you know, because then what will happen is you're stressing yourself out and you're making it hard. Plants do what? I'm going to tell you why they use plants in, in a lot of these references. Plants respond to your energy. If your energy is sickly, toxic, mean, uneven, plants have a hard time growing. If your energy is of love and expansion, plants can grow. Plants like water reflect what it is that you're spiritually feeling because your emotions are spiritual. If you allow your emotions to flow too much into this illusion of the 3D, then they, they can, it can be manipulated. But when you allow for your emotions to stay very in tuned and balanced, like balanced waters, like balanced energy around plants, then they grow and expand. 
So that's why plants are used a lot whenever they're talking about the seven of, of pentacles. It's like you've planted a seed and you're seeing that it grows. You come in, you water it every now and then, and you're just waiting for the opportunity in the right moment to pick it like a fruit. You have to pick a fruit when it's at that right time to pick it. So that's what this is saying. Allow yourself to go through the planting seed process of visualizing, feeling what you want. That's how you manifest. That's law of attraction. It's not just writing down affirmations. Feel it. Allow your imagination to be free. Allow yourself to be the artist that paints on the canvas of the reality you wish to create. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? What would, what would you express if you had it? Okay, now start to work from that feeling. Now, everything you touch, everything you talk about, everything that you engross yourself in when it comes to that idea in your everyday life involves that emotion, that joyous emotion. We also have 10 of swords. Every day is a good day when you paint. Notice the, the flow here. Again, some of you have people that you might have felt have taken advantage of your kindness or whether you like to admit it or not, you keep volunteering yourself and then feeling like crap after volunteering yourself and people aren't necessarily reciprocating that energy. The 10 of swords can be that portrayed feeling. It can be that I feel pinned down feeling. For some of you, it's just that I feel pinned down. I feel kind of stuck in my situation. But if you allow yourself every day to realize that you are free and that you are abundant, if you allow yourself to tap into the power of I am, I recommend you watch that that Rama pre-party video so that you can really get an understanding of what I'm trying to say here because I'm about to wrap this up. But if you really allow yourself to tap into that energy, then every day you are realizing you're not actually pinched, you're not actually stuck, you can get up. You can rise from that situation. You've survived it. Now it's time to move forward. Moving forward, my friends, it means on everything. Mentally, physically, spiritually. You can't say, okay, spiritually, I'm embark on this journey and I'm going forward, but I'm gonna leave my physical body stuck where it is, even though I've been getting signs I need to move physically away from where I'm at. Okay, physically I move, but I keep my emotions stuck back on the people back in that town or in that that house apartment. Mentally, I'm still thinking about that time, this, that, and the third happened. You can't, in other words, to be blunt, you can't half-ass this, my loves. <laughs> There's no more half-assing this. There's too many portals open. Everything you think right now it's triggering a new reality. Do you want the fixed path or the destiny? Yes, fate can tie into destiny as well, but from the unknown new adventure perspective versus the stuck in toxicity perspective or the settling, because for some of you, it's the settling energy. We have 10 of pentacles showing you how all of this manifests into the physical. Anything that you try and you don't succeed if you learn from it, it's not a failure. What did I say earlier about mistakes? You see how it all ties back around? And then we have, I thought this was like beautiful how it just, it came right out. We have 10 of pentacles from the tarot. So we have 10 of pentacles twice. And this 10 of pentacles, you know, we know 10 of pentacles speaks about legacy, but also speaks about that fulfillment in this physical material world. This material world should be viewed as, as sacred. Everything you do from what you do with your body, your mind, your language should all be viewed as something sacred. How you speak about yourself. Remember, this is about self-love. So if you speak self-love into your being, I love me. I love I love my ideas. I love my creativity. I love you speak love. Look in the mirror and speak love into yourself. You manifest love into yourself. You walk with a different pep in your step. So then the people who are drawn to you end up being the people who vibrate with that level or they're inspired by that, want to match that, and they can flow in your life. Some people might still be seasons because sometimes negative people want to be attracted to good things. They want to break it down. That ain't none of your business. That's their personal problem, <laughs> right? They're going to have, they have their own journey, their own lesson to learn. You affect the collective by showing how you can still move forward and keep that pep in your step. All right. Now in the description, I'm going to include some of the signs here because of course we had um, Leo energy coming out strong here with the eight of wands. I kept really feeling a lot of Leo energy. You know, again, we had air signs and, and so on and so forth. I'm going to put all that in the description so that we can end this video here because it's a little long. 
the last thing I want to say, if, uh, if you haven't checked the description yet, I am a part of the Rama Winter Solstice Festival that kicks off tomorrow. It goes into the 21st. Some of you I know have already gotten tickets. For those of you who haven't gotten tickets yet, you still can purchase them. I believe you'll also be able to purchase them on the days. Um, it's just a matter, I guess, of like which access pass you get. But if you wish to see Light Wisdom channel messages live, you wish to experience that and what, what it's like to watch me channel and, and resonate with that, then I recommend that you watch. If you wish to see a preview of a very brief version of what that's like, then you can watch the pre-party video that I just mentioned earlier where I actually channeled the power of I am in that one. And each one is different. Each one's a different topic. So what, what I say in the pre-party, it's not the same as what you'll see at the actual event itself. Even if it flows and ties together, it's just, it's different. So the link to that will be in the description. Make sure you check that out. And blessings, my loves. Embark on your journey. You got this. Peace.